everybody, I hope you are doing great. Uh, I'm Said Kazemizad. I'm here with a new video about the CPDLC, Controller Pilot Data Link Communication. I hope you enjoy this video. Actually today, in this content, we are going to discuss about the CPDLC or uh, content would be introduction at the beginning. Then we will have a short definitions, description about the CPDLC, data link service impending roles, and data link services, expect, expected benefits from CPDLC, main principle of the CPDLC exchange, CPDLC operation, and uh, some conclusion and a summary about the CPDLC. Of course, in this video, we will have some uh, phraseologies which are related to CPDLC and stuff like that. I hope you enjoy this video. As an introduction about the CPDLC or controller pilot data link communication, uh, I can mention the reduction of the voice communication in the ATC frequencies. And on the other side, in some areas, we do not have the ability to make the communication in high quality. So CPDLC is helping us in that regions, as in North Atlantic flights and uh, some African flights. Actually, these days they are using the CPDLC in European region. CPDLC is a two-way communication of the data link between controllers and pilots. Actually, we have the communication between ground to air and air to ground. Actually, in CPDLC, the controller and pilots are usually sending the non-urgent messages to each other. When we are using the CPDLC, the controllers are provided with ATC clearances, as in level, takeoff clearance, descent clearance, direct clearance, and too many different kind of clearances. And on the other side, the pilots are provided with the level change request, and uh, they, are, they can request for the diversion, they can request for diversion of the weather, they can request for heading change and they have so much different kind of options that they can request through the CPDLC. Actually, in new version of the CPDLC, we can see some emergency messages that are available or some free text. But nowadays, and mostly I can say, the pilots and controllers prefer to use the CPDLC for non-urgent messages rather than the emergency ones. So uh, these days we are mostly uh, what we see in the CPDLC is non-urgent messages. Actually, below some altitudes, the CPDLC usage is restricted by the companies and on the other side by some authorities. For an instance, usually we are using the CPDLC above 10,000 feet to reduce the head down time for the pilots. Uh, but on the other side, we have some airports that they are issuing the takeoff clearance or ATC clearance on the ground for the pilots. Yeah, uh, to begin for the initial imagination in your mind, I am going to describe the CPDLC as in WhatsApp application. The CPDLC is a kind of software on board the aircraft which pilots and the controllers can send their messages through the, this, kind, this system and they are sending the data links. Uh, it means that, for an instance, when the pilot is locked on within the CPDLC of an FIR, they can receive and send some messages, as in WhatsApp messages that we are sending daily. But mostly, these kind of messages are pre-existed on the FMC. So, we are not that open hand to make all kind of messages that we want, even though some kind of FMCs has this capability, but most of them don't have this kind of capability. In fact, for, a, for an example, when we contact with an uh, FIR ATC, uh, and when we have the approval to use the CPDLC, we can request, for an instance, request direct uh, heading 285 to avoid the weather condition ahead. But the message is already exist, and the only thing that the pilot is adding to this mes message is the heading, level change, and some part of this message. And on the other side, 
when we are receiving the message from the ATC, they are mostly same and they have a box for filling and sending the messages. So when we are using the CPDLC, we have some standard phraseology. So CPDLC has too many benefits. I can mention to some of them here. Less communication on the ATC frequency is one of the most important benefits of using CPDLC. For an instance, imagine we are flying in an area which is not so big, but hundreds of aircraft are flying on that area and hundreds of pilots are going to request and have the ATC communication in an old version. So the frequency blockage will occur so many times and so much. So uh, when we are using the CPDLC, the number of the uh, voice communication reduces. So in case of emergency or some urgent message, we have a freedom to send the message on the voice directly to the ATC uh, air, air traffic controller. Uh, the other uh, benefit of the CPDLC can be mentioned increase the sector capability. Yeah. Of course, it's like that. When we have less uh, voice communication, we can ex expect more airplanes on that sector. So, uh, with low actually uh, number of the frequency and sectors, we can provide the service to more aircraft. The other benefits which is written in my document is more pilot requests can be dealt with, the, with, with simultaneously. So for an instance, now when we are using the voice communication, we should wait when the, when the other pilot request is sent and they receive the clearance. Now it's order if the area is not that clear that we have to wait for so many time for, for a long time. Uh, this can take approximately uh, sometimes more than uh, one minute. But while we are using the CPDLC, easily we send the message and the controller will receive the messages in a sequence that they, we are sending. The other benefit of the CPDLC is the reduced probability of the miscommunication. Yeah, as you know, in the voice communication, we have the capability of miscommunication and we have already experienced so many uh, incidents and accidents regarding to the miscommunication. But while we are using the CPDLC, we have actually uh, a special phraseology and we have uh, the text on board the aircraft. The text is always available. We can cross check together the text is written, it's not, uh, the, the, the pronunciation does not matter to us, everything is uh, written. So the uh, risk of misunderstanding is reduced while we are using the CPDLC. Another benefit or the last which is written in my document and I can mention is safer frequency change and fewer loss of communication events. Yeah, while we are using the CPDLC, the frequency change is sent by the CPDLC or data link. Uh, we receive a message which is written like contact uh, Vienna, Pro, Vienna control uh, one, uh, I don't know, one, one, blah, 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 this frequency. So uh, we can easily switch to the Vienna control and change the frequency. And usually we do not suffer from the misunderstanding of the numbers which we had in old version of the communication. And uh, so we, the, the, the frequency blockage would be reduced and error would be uh, less. And we have so many benefits that I mentioned only some of them here. Let's talk about the main principles of the CPDLC operation. While we are using the CPDLC operation, we have four main principles. The first one is that we have to always have the two-way normal voice communication with the ATC. The second one is to have the uh, messages in non-critical situation. 
Actually, yes, CPDRC is available during critical phases of flight, but it's better not to use it for critical phases of flight, and it's better to uh, use the normal voice communication instead of CPDRC. The third one is that the decision to use of the CPDLC is by pilots or controllers. Even pilot or, uh, or controllers can decide to use the CPDLC at the present time or not. Sometimes uh, it's, it's busy time for the controllers or the pilots and they are not available to respond to the CPDLC messages and easily they can ignore them. And they, and they can use the normal voice communication uh, services and or system that they used to use before uh, having the CPDLC. And the last main principle of the CPDLC is that the control flight which is using the CPDLC should always have the communication only with one air traffic control unit. It's time to have a briefing about the CPDLC operation. While we are going to use the CPDLC in our aircraft, in our fleets, we need to have some precautions. These precautions are listed as below. In the ATC flight plan, we need to add letter J at item 10 of the ATC flight plan. And also on the item 18, we need to add com slash CPDLC to mention that this aircraft which is going to fly in the CPDLC region has the CPDLC on board the aircraft and is available with the restrictions written in the region that the aircraft is going to fly. The next item that we need to be aware about it is the way and the time we need to log on. Each and every authority has its own restrictions. For an instance, we have some authorities that they log on the CPDLC underground, as in Germany. But we have on the other side some uh, actually as, uh, authorities which they ask us to log on the CPDLC while we are airborne or above an specified altitude. Okay, what is the logon? Logon is to uh, just uh, on getting online with the CPDLC to sending the uh, first message to the ATC unit actually to let them know that we are using the CPDLC again even though it's written on the ATC flight plan but we are going to let them know that we have we are going to use the CPDLC while we send a logon message the ATC unit will accept it okay and uh, sometimes we are flying in the regions that uh, the first FIR unit is not using the CPDLC. For instance, we are flying from, I don't know, uh, Bulgaria to uh, somewhere on the way uh, that crossed the uh, Prague FIR. Uh, in the beginning part of the flight, I mean Bulgaria is not using the CPDLC. So we are not going to log on as far as they are not using the CPDLC, but in Pride they are using the CPDLC. So in the Jepson Enroute charts or AIP of an uh, authority, we can see when we should log on to the CPDLC unit. For instance, it's written in Pride, it's all the examples. I'm not sure about the exact uh, timing and exact uh, limitation of the FIRs. For instance, in the Prague, it's written that we need to log on 20 minutes before entering the FIR. Okay, just 20 minutes, minutes before entering the FIR, we would send the logon message to the uh, ATC unit of the uh, Prague and they will accept during these 20 minutes. But on the other side, uh, when we are crossing some authorities, some FIRs units, that they are using the uh, CPDLC and then going to another uh, FIR which is not using the CPDLC uh, when we change the uh, voice communication to the new FIR uh, to the new authority the CPDLC is over right there and then 
from that time that we make the first communication with the new FIR, uh, we need to log off the CPDLC uh, within 20 minutes maximum. But again, we need to check the operation uh, re restrictions of the uh, authorities that we are using. Uh, on the other side, uh, the question that may come to your mind is that, okay, what will happen? When we are using the CPD, when we are, we are flying over a CPDLC FIR to another CPDLC FIR, uh, most of the uh, FMS or CPDLC systems on board the aircraft uh, has the option to change the CPDLC FIR automatically. Actually, uh, the CPDLC FIR, which is uh, which we are flying right now, is called current data. Uh, authority and it's shown by CDA and the next uh, data uh, authority is shown by NDA in our uh, FMS we can check and we can have a cross check over these regions but mostly the FMC will make the change of the FIR by itself automatically without any mistake However, just before we enter that FIR, before we change the FIR, we can check it on our uh, FMS. Uh, the other operational item that we need to uh, know is that in the CPDLC, we have single element or multi-element messages. Or on the other side, they say open dialog or closed dialog. Uh, single elements means that we have one message on the on the whole message for instance in the cpdlc they say proceed on heading 285 descend flight level 180 mm, i don't know climb flight level 150 this message is oh, uh, correction close uh, dialogue or single element message on the other side we can have some multi uh, element message or open dialogue messages as in climb heading to a uh, climb uh, correction flight level 185 and right heading 285. In this phraseology, we have altitude message and uh, actually heading message. We have vertical and lateral message. We can have these kind of messages and we should be so much careful about these kind of messages. Uh, but the point is that we cannot have an open dialect message with the same uh, items. For example, we cannot say proceed on heading 300 and after 5 minutes direct to uh, blah 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 waypoint. Because both of these messages are lateral, so we cannot have this kind of message in the CPDLC. The point which is very important and I need to mention you here while you are using the CPDLC both pilots should read the message and actually pilot monitoring will reply but usually the operation is written uh, in the SOP of the company and we need to obey the SOP which is written in operation manual part B but uh, usually it would be like that the pilot monitoring which uh, is receiving the message will read the message loudly pilot flying also cross check that and then they reply uh, we should be careful about the open dialog messages because sometimes the pilots miss one part of the message for an instance it's written uh, proceed on heading uh, 030 descent flight level 200 but the pilot only proceed on heading which is mentioned on the previous message and uh, do not read the uh, rest, rest of message and uh, they may have some uh, near miss or some incidents. So we need to be careful while we are using the CPDLC, we have to read the messages fully, correctly and we don't need to rush. It's a busy day at the airport, and the crew of Big Jet 007 is preparing for flight. 
After establishing an ATC data link, they send a successful logon notification and the notified ATC center appears on the DCDU. Big Jet 007 departs. At flight level 210, they are instructed by CPDLC to contact the next sector. ADCO instructs frequency change via data link, and Big Jet 007 establishes contact via standard RT. When they receive clearance to climb to flight level 350, they confirm, select Wilco, and send their response to ATCO. Shortly before top of descent, a cabin crew member enters the flight deck to talk to the pilot flying. At the same time, ADCO issues a multi-element clearance to send flight level 280 and turn right heading 120 degrees. The pilot monitoring acknowledges the instructions without confirmation from the pilot flying and only informs him of the first instruction. Soon, ADCO notices that Big Jet 007 does not commence the turn as cleared and calls them on frequency. They respond that they did not see the instruction to turn, even though the pilot monitoring acknowledged it. ADCO has to issue immediate avoiding action to both Big Jet 007 and Small Jet 666. Big Jet 007 receives a TCAS traffic alert and is then cleared to destination. CPDMC is a new generation of the communication between controllers and pilots. So, we need new phraseology of communication which is related to uh, CPDLC. For more information, you can check the ICO Annex 10 Part 3 for the phraseologies which is used for CPDLC. Here, I have some examples of using the phraseologies which is used in CPDLC. The first one which I have in my document is uh, the call sign. Disregard CPDLC message which is already done break and then correct message for example the atc unit will give you a clearance to climb flight level 290 okay and your call sign is aviation at home one two three they say and uh, and finally they change their mind to climb to another altitude but they are not going to send this message through the cpdlc again also, they can do it, but they are here, they don't like to send it like that. They say, aviation at home, one, two, three. Disregard CPDLC, climb flight level 290 message. Break, climb flight level 310. This is the correct phraseology, which we can use it through the CPDLC. Another message that I have in my document is CPDLC message failure. Sometimes we have some problems to send the message of the CPDLC, we can use this phraseology. CPDLC message failure or CPDLC failure by itself. Sometimes the ATC want to send us some information that CPDLC is not working on this region for the time being. They will send all the stations CPDLC failure on Prague FIR, for example. Uh, the next message that I can mention is that they can say for the CPDLC problem, I mean the ATC controller, uh, uh, air traffic controller, can send us is all station uh, stop sending CPDLC request on Prague FIR due to CPDLC failure, for example. And uh, we have some other kind of phraseologies which is used on the CPDLC. I advise you check the ICO uh, uh, documents uh, for more information about these uh, phraseologies. To make a good conclusion for CPDLC lesson, we need to spend long time studying about it. Actually, we are we are not that much open hand for making this study all in few minutes. So, what I'm advising you to do is. If you like to use this uh, system, you can uh, use some documents which are introduced by the ICAO, FA, or IASA. Here I will list some uh, documents for you. You may study, you may get some more information, and if you need 
uh, to uh, make some questions I'm available anytime you can send me a message uh, the documents which I use for preparing this video was the ICO global operation data link manual which is known also as gold manual ICO annex 10 volume 3 part 1 chapter 3 ICO document 444 which is known as PENS ATM European Commission documents, Euro control documents as in ATC data link operation guidance for link 2000 plus, FAA advisory 19170 October 2017. And uh, if you search by the Google, you can find so many documents talking about the CPDLC. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful for you. And now I'm inviting you to the cockpit of a Boeing 737-800 to use the CPDLC in European area. I hope you enjoy.